All right, hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun. I'm here again today once more with my friend Vincent LaRusso. How you doing, Vin? What's up, bud? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do like what we're calling like a quick blast, a weekly thing. We, we don't know exactly how this is going to evolve, but we figured we wanted to just kind of touch base a little bit on some of the news that's in, you know, some of the rock and roll news that's out there right now, right? So, and I think this week... We've had we we've all heard about the uh, the Aerosmith story with uh, with Joey Kramer. So um, for some people that don't know some of the backstory, you know he's had shoulder issues for the past I guess eight nine months. I think it started last May when they were in the Vegas residency, and he wasn't able to do some of the shows, and he hasn't been performing with them since. This week it hit the news because there's two major events that uh, Aerosmith is going to be at. The first one actually took place last night, and it's a uh, a music cares they were doing a an, an acknowledgement for a person of the year usually it's a person who gets that but this year it was Aerosmith, smith the whole band that got that and tomorrow night's an even bigger one the grammys are doing the lifetime achievement award and of course as many of you people probably heard you know the band is going to be performing at both of those but they told joey that he was unable to perform that they didn't feel he was up to it um they made him actually go through a rehearsal and they said that he just didn't have the power or the stamina to to do the show with them a couple of songs so uh it's been a lot of news and we figured hey let's let's kind of weigh in with our two cents on what we think and vin i'm really curious to hear your point of view you know you're a drummer you're a bass player a guitar player a singer a dancer a songwriter <laughs> so you know what, what's your thoughts on this and them not letting him play well first of all i do none of those well but my <laughs> Well, you're my in seven or eight are, bands, so you must be doing something right. My thoughts are, I got to go. Actually, I got my own audition, so I'll check you guys later. <laughs> okay, good. <bye. laughs> yeah, it's a good thing I have props on hand. That's right. Um, listen, yeah. First of all, if people know or they don't know, Steven Tyler, I think he was originally a drummer. Um, he yep. plays drums. People should check out The Making of Pump. If it's still available on DVD, it's an excellent, uh, I guess, I don't know if you call it a documentary or what you call it, just of them writing for the album, um, recording, rehearsing. It, I mean, I love that stuff. Yeah. And what you get out of watching it is not only just how cool it is just to see how a, a song, you know, starts as this little idea and it just blossoms into, and I mean, I think one of the things that's really cool is like Janie's got a gun and you could see Steven Tyler on the keyboard coming up with the vocal melody and him playing the mm -hmm. bass line on the keys, which they wound up using on the record. But you see how tough he is on Joey Kramer, even back mm -hmm. then. Right, right. Um, listen, you know, I, it's going to be one of those things as you get older, as a drummer, I know the physicality of playing the instrument, the power and whatnot. You may not have that as you did as, and probably when they record that album, they probably in their what forties, maybe. Right. Yep. We're talking about 89, 90. Yep. Do my math correctly. Um, and it's all about the money. It's all about like these guys, these bands want to still, you know, be relevant. You're going on, you know, national uh, broadcast. It's a big show, especially the Grammys. And, you know, I, I got to believe that the band, and it's probably driven by Steven, you know, gave him the opportunity. We know he had physical physical ailments. Yep. And, you know, they all, you know, how could they make them, you know, play to a click? And how can, listen, you know, this is stuff when you're going live, you know, everyone has in-ear monitors now. You know, they probably didn't want to compromise because we know, you know, you could see videos lately of David Lee Roth or, you know, <laughs> and you could hear like, oh, my God, I can't believe how it sounds. You know, the drummer is the heart, of, you know, a heartbeat of the band. And if you don't have that right from the top, you know, it's just going to make the band all, you know, sound that much weaker. So, you know, have they handled this in, in the right way? I, I know there's a TMZ video out there. And you can mm -hmm. see Joey showing up to the mix. <laughs> You know, you feel bad for the guy, but quite honestly, the band's probably thinking like, listen, we don't want there to be any weird confrontation. He comes walking in the studio. I can't blame them from doing that. As, as, as a hard as it is to watch, to see a guy who's been at the core of the band for all these years, it's about business. And they have, you know, they have an obligation that they have to fulfill. Yep. And I honestly think 
you know, and, you know, I don't have all the information, but from what I've seen and read that they probably handled it the right way. And, and I got to think, listen, he's, you know, a core guy. Why wouldn't they want him to be there unless there's some other bad blood that's gone on, you know? Well, that, well, yeah. So let, let me interject here for a moment for you. So the music cares event actually was last night yeah. and I know we're doing this Saturday morning. So news is just breaking. They actually had Joey Kramer with them at the event and he actually went up to the podium with them and um from the video i've seen so far only two people spoke steven tyler and joey kramer nobody else from the band even actually from what i've seen did any kind of acknowledgments so they okay. actually did let him come up on stage with them at the podium get the award and acknowledge that so i thought that was kind of cool but when it came time for the performance it was all right Goodbye, off the stage, yeah. you know, and they brought in their drum tech that's been playing with them the last seven, eight months. And um, right. I think they did three songs, uh, Big Ten Inch, Dream On, and Sweet Emotion. I think it was the three songs that they did last night. And, you know, my thought is I hear everything that you just said, and it's 100% I agree with you. <sighs> the guy's been in the band for 50 years. I can't imagine he has to rehearse, especially Dream On and Sweet Emotion at all to get up on stage and perform. And a thought that I had, and now you're going to tell me as the music, right? I'm not the musician. You're the musician. I'm the person who listens to music. I remember when I saw Fleetwood Mac four or five years ago, Mick Fleetwood was playing drums and behind them and off to the side a little bit was a second mm. drummer. Mm. Okay. And I took that to mean that Mick Fleetwood's getting up there in age. Mm. He just doesn't have the full stamina, the full power to play the drums. And they had somebody enhancing it. I also remember Peter Chris four or five years ago, jumped up on stage with, uh, I think, Rob Zombie. And they did God of Thunder, if I remember right. And yeah. Peter Chris played drums. And behind Peter Chris was a second drummer. So is it crazy to think that maybe they could have had Joey Kramer up on stage and a second drummer off to the side or whatever to compliment it? Or is this just on a TV show and performances like this not really feasible, do you think? Well, I don't know how much control they have over that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they are Aerosmith, so I'm sure they could have asked the question and maybe for production wise and, you know, having to move sets or doing whatever. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know all that stuff. Um, and maybe maybe Joey didn't want to do that. Do we even know that that was right. even offered to him? We don't know. Maybe no. maybe to Joey, it's like, is it better not to be on the stage at all? Or is it mm -hmm. better to be on the stage with somebody that's back of you playing, like say, look, he can't really do it, right. so I got to be back here. I don't know what's worse, you know. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I was in that in, in his shoes, you know, how I would feel about it, and I kind of still feel mixed about it. But mm -hmm. to what you said, he showed up. He yep. spoke. If there was really that much animosity with these guys, come on, they, mm -hmm. he would have been there. Uh, yeah. And I think that just goes to prove that, you know, it's a hard thing. I'm sure it's a hard thing for Stephen and for and, and for um. Come on, help me out. Jo talk Joe Perry. Here. Joe Perry. Tom Hamilton. The, the rest of the band. Yeah, Brad Whitford. Uh huh. Well, you know, that, that's your old age setting in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> you still got it in the arms. You miss my, you miss my Abraham Lincoln thing. I don't that's know why. <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, uh, it's a tough. I I I played, you know, I I I played with some some gigs with some drummers who when they start getting up in age and you start hearing some things and mm -hmm. memory's not as good and mm -hmm. stuff like that and uh man i mean steven seems to be uh, he's very he's a stickler and he's you know he wants it to be as sharp as can be you know? mm -hmm. and so um I, I think the thing that gets some Aerosmith fans is, and we've seen the videos of Steven literally falling off stage a few years back. And I think yeah. people feel a little bit like some people, hey, you know, Steve's had his, his issues in the past. Joe Perry's had his issues in the past. And yet they work through them and they still let these guys perform all the time. You know, um, it's a tricky spot because you said it before, the drummer is the backbone. And if he's off time even a little bit, the yeah. performance is going to be a train wreck, you know? Yeah. Um, Especially in... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yeah, no, no, go ahead. put you on that thought. Who knows if they have any pre-recorded tracks going on? Right. You know, and all of a sudden he misses a cue or whatever, and you have some sort of Millie Vanilli situation going on. <laughs> right, that's maybe a good point. Maybe they don't want to I never even thought dice. about that. Yeah. yeah they, maybe know. they don't even want to roll the dice with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. They don't want to tell you that. Of course. And they you know, will. <laughs> so I could say, well, you know, we have a contract, and, you know, Joey might not, they might, you know, they might just want to just keep that quiet. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I've never heard anything with backing tracks with them. Um, but that's an interesting angle I had never thought of. 
I never thought of. So to you, in your mind, the fact that they had him up on the podium, they acknowledged him, they gave him his moment to shine by speaking. Um, as, as a musician, you kind of understand what, what they did. I, I get the feeling you think, yeah, it's, it's, it's understandable. Well, it makes me feel a little bit better about the situation because you never want to see, you know, your heroes be put in, the, in a light like that where right. you, you see the guy. And even on the video, I mean, Joey handled that you oh, know, absolutely. Yep. extremely like a professional. And and maybe that's because, A, he's a professional. And maybe B, he realized, so maybe, you know, maybe they're right here. You know, maybe this is what it needs to be right now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, who knows? Uh, maybe he was just stunned. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you couldn't get him for this, right? I thought you were going to do a three-way. Yeah, you know? I tried to get him on, but, you know, he just didn't want to talk publicly about it right now. <laughs> no, just, have you know, that, just have that pull with Vinny Vincent. I get it. That's right. Yeah. No, um, you know, and to that point, I give the band members credit also because in the middle of all of this, Joe, Joey Kramer actually filed a lawsuit against Aerosmith. Smith. And mm -hmm. having a lawsuit out there would have been very easy for the other four guys to say, you know, he's suing us. Screw him. He's not even coming up on the podium to accept the award. And they looked past that, so I give them credit for that. But let's let's also face facts here. Everybody's got a manager. Everybody's got somebody. Yes. Yep. You're going to think after that episode happened that nobody reached out to Joey or nobody right. talked, or maybe Steven picked up the phone, or maybe they had a little – you think that Joey just showed up that night? No, of course not. You right. know, last right. night and just, come on. You know, they, they had to have worked it out, talked it out. You're going to speak, you know. And, and, you know, it's – so I think in the end it's it's – Unfortunate that Joey can't do these two performances, mm -hmm. um, and we just got to look to hope that, you know, moving forward he'll be in, you know, playing shape that the band feels he needs to be, mm -hmm. and maybe quite honestly he knows he needs to be. Right. And, right. Uh, and uh, you know, those you know those Aerosmith fans will be able to enjoy the band, the original lineup. It's again one of these rare instances where you <laughs> got a you know the original lineup. Mm -hmm. Not too many fans have that anymore. No, you without a doubt, that's true. And um, look, you said it before, I think he's 70 or over 70 years old now. At some point, especially with drummers, there comes a point where I have to imagine it just gets too tough at a certain age to keep up that performance for two hours. Yeah. Playing hard rock music, you know, driving songs most of the night. I know Aerosmith has a few ballads, yeah. but, you know, it's got to be tough on a 70-year-old. Listen, I'm not at 70. Mm -hmm. I played the bass last night, and I got those guys installed in that chair that goes on the steps <laughs> that I could sit. And my legs are like, and you know, that's just, you know. So it's it does get harder. It's physically, it does get harder, and, and that just goes to prove what Kiss always says. And I know I'm going on a Kiss thing. You know, wearing those costumes, moving around, and almost 70 years old, it's it's hard, man. You know, and you know, Paul Stanley works out. You see, he's still in great shape. If he didn't do any of that stuff. Hip surgery, knee surgery. What does he have? You know, right. so I give these guys credit, you know, because they work hard to stay in shape. Yep. You know, because you really need to. Absolutely, absolutely. So you know, I guess I'll, I'll close on saying, I tend to largely agree with you. I do wish they could have worked out something with like a two drummer situation, like I mentioned before, that Mick Fleetwood does. But you know, again, in defense of Aerosmith, from what I've read, and who knows how much of this is true. Joey Kramer was reached out to a month ago, didn't respond, didn't respond, didn't respond, waited to the last minute. And perhaps at that point, there was no opportunity to do a rehearsal with the two drummers. But I look at that TMZ video and I say, you know what? Hey, he was there at the rehearsal studio. You could hear them rehearsing in the background. They maybe could have worked something out. But I, I think you bring up as a musician a lot of great points. I think as a fan, to me, I wish there was some way to get him. I don't care. Even with a freaking tambourine on stage, just so that he's part of the performance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still feel mixed about that. Um, I, you know, what you're saying, too, about him not responding. I mean, you know, why not? Right. Of course. Point? Of course. Um, like you said before, somewhere deep inside, he might know, uh, hey, I really can't do this that good anymore. And listen, you know, you just mentioned about the uh, the Fleetwood Mac thing. Mm -hmm. You paid to go see that show. That's a, you know, Absolutely. that's a concert. Those are shows. This is a one or two night thing that's on TV, you know, so. Fleetwood Mac might be thinking, all right, people are paying to see us play. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do this because people are paying good money to see this. Right. The Grammy situation, this is, it's not the same sort of situation. So mm -hmm. I see, what, I hear what you're saying about that, but I still think that makes it a little bit different. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, so, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow night at the Grammys. I'm assuming they're going to let him go back up to the podium. And I'm guessing they'll even let him say a couple of words like he did last night, which... At least he gets that. At least he gets that moment. But um, it'll be interesting to see what happens if they tour later this year or whatever, if he's able to come back. 
It'd be awesome if, he, if they were able to create a vehicle and uh, you know, like a drum set, and he just comes running on the stage, <laughs> like like you know, like with the Bigfoot back in the day, you know, and just like just goes over to stuff and stuff and him driving the vehicle. That would be cool. You know? Okay. Yeah. Somehow if they could do that. I don't know. Oh, I know it's right. sort of nice, but I'm just throwing the idea out there. There you, you know? go. I'll, I'll tell them to contact you. If... <laughs> I got the schematics. There you go. All right. Anything else you want to say on this one, bud? Yeah, I think I covered it all. All right, yeah, so you know, like we said, we're going to try to do these on a regular basis on some hot news rock and roll topics. This one was about Aerosmith. Um, let us know your comments. Let us know your thoughts. You know, do you think they should have let him play a couple of songs? Do you agree with Vin that, hey, you know, this is a live broadcast and uh, they have to make sure it's picture perfect? Definitely put your comments in. Let us know. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel right over there below and uh, go over to my Facebook page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun, where every day we talk about the rock and roll music that you love. And I guess until next time, that'll be it. Thanks a lot, Finn. Appreciate you joining me today and uh, talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Later, bud. Later. Bye. Bye.